Mr. Neal? Yes. Are you comfortable? Yes. Okay, we're ready to start your surgery. Can you look down just a little bit? Can you find the bright light? Yes. Uh, then we'll try to find the light that's straight ahead. Okay. The bright light there? Yeah. And now look just a little bit to the right of it. That's good. Anesthesia. Yes, certainly have. In fact, it's interesting when you when I do a case and with a periballbar now, and the light is turned full brightness. It almost seems too bright for me because I've gotten used to the lower illumination. Are you feeling anything? Oh, I feel fine, thank you. Okay. Five. I'm using a small limbus flap here. This is going to be a 5.5. We're operating temporally because of uh, against the rule of stigmatism. I do often use a clear corneal incision and uh, some foldable lens. Um, temporal incisions, but I don't hesitate to use the, the scleral tunnel approach temporally as well. In fact, the uh, paper I'll be giving is we uh, did a little retrospective study and found that our standard deviation, as well as the mean uh, induced flattening, was lower with the scleral tunnel and the clear corneal at two to four months. Maybe it's my learning curve with corneal incisions. I think we can consider this approach, uh, and I like to use a temporal incision always if there's against the rule of stigmatism. And conversely, I like to use a superior incision if there's with the rule of stigmatism to reduce rather than possibly add to the astigmatism. Yes, I go obliquely as well. Superior nasally is a little difficult, but uh, unless there's a very high um, um, nasal bridge or brow, you can usually operate superior nasally. Now, it's a little awkward here. I'm just going to turn your head this way a little bit and have to ask you to look down just a little. That's pretty good there. And you can see we can uh, usually have the patient move the eye to where it's optimal. You could try a little brighter light here to tell me if your image isn't good there and we can give a little more light probably. look down just a little. The red reflex was in the way there. I was losing my edge of the capsule or the tear. I like to uh, size it according to the implant I'm using. 
another debate about the, whether it should be larger or smaller than the implant. I prefer it to be slightly smaller. I like it to cover the edge of the implant. We found that uh, there's a reduced spike, uh, pressure spike after YAG laser. I think it, it uh, makes for a membrane of the capsule and lens afterward. Look right at the light, hold steady. There is a downside to it being smaller, and that is uh, with this uh, ring, ring contracture of the capsularexis. That's more likely to happen with loose annual pseudo-exfoliation cases, so that's a situation where I will uh, uh, make the capsularexis larger than the implant. Can you look straight ahead? That's good. Memory three. Memory. Memory three. The temple aspect. Uh, yes, I do. Can you look down just a little? Uh, my wrist rest wraps around the eye a little, so. It's not as uh, secure as the forehead plus a wrist rest. So it's a little more awkward at times operating from the temporal side. sculpt it down to the pole there and I'm going to try to fracture. I may not be deep enough, but yes, I am getting a fracture. You can see that there. And there's another and then and these segments will want to come right up because you have a good purchase on them for the fracture. And if the lens material fractures easily, I'll often take them just for efficiency rather than let go and repurchase later. Do you notice in that first case it was a little more dense lens I left or here I'm taking as they come. There's the first segment we fractured that I had left in place. Now we just have the upper hemi section. We can slide it in, attack it from the top, and break away a piece just by pushing down with the spatula on the rest of it. And likewise, aspiration only. Maybe you can hear the pump speed. That's my indicator of what foot position I'm in. Because sometimes you can't hear the buzz of the ultrasound on the very low uh, early travel of the foot switch on position three.
spatula out first and then the phaco tip out. Can you look down just a little? Have you had any discomfort? No. Good. You can see there's a little more uh, communication with the patient and in his case here the eye has turned a little more sometimes away from me and I've had to bring it back by asking him to turn it. But so this varies quite a bit from patient to patient. And it can be a bit troublesome sometimes having to hold the eye with the forceps even. Some patients have difficulty maintaining a steady gaze. Here, here I'm using the very high flow for efficiency because it's a little thicker cortex. And then a complete vent to zero before going back for more. Particularly this 12 o'clock, you have to be very gentle with very low flow. You can hear the vacuum rise, so I pull it out to the center before the vacuum gets too high. Now we'll just rub off a little of this material on the capsule. it is. One thing about in, uh, putting a viscoelastic in under topical, there's sometimes unexpected eye movements, so I'll stop right at the incision here and start a, a glob of viscoelastic deepening the chamber before uh, putting the cannula farther into the eye. I had one occasion where I was just entering the cannula into the eye and the patient moved unexpectedly and the chamber collapsed and I uh, punctured the posterior capsule. So some of the movements that were automatic with, with uh, perivalvar anesthesia have to be modified for topical. This is the 5.25 LX10 again. And spatula, I think uh, you just have to nudge that down a little bit. Side. There we got it. Look straight ahead again. So I slipped the IA tip in before putting any irrigation. You can get right under the lens and then start the irrigation. the lens pop back and get whatever else may be in the anterior to the implant. Look straight ahead. See the bright light of the microscope? Yes. And look right at that for a moment. Okay. This is vancomycin that I'm putting right in the capsule bag. Again, slipping under the implant. And firming up the eye, which also dilutes the uh, antibiotic probably a bit. And look to the right just a little. Okay, now straight ahead again.
We put a little marking on the eye after the scleral incision is sealed. Uh, just uh, to try to avoid any sensation with this uh, cautery of the conge.